All right, welcome back, folks. We're still on the topic of abstraction, but now we're going to think about generalization. So generalization is the idea that you've seen multiple copies of things, and there's one more general solution. So the example we have here is you decide to visit a friend at their farm, and they give you a set of notes of what to do, and they leave, and so you're going to try to mine the farm. And so the first, you go to the animal, and they, it says, to feed the dog, they certainly have dogs at farms, and to feed the dog, put the dog food in the dog dish. And there's another big set of notes, and it says, to feed the chicken, put the chicken food in the chicken dish. And you have another set of notes, like, wait, that seems very repetitive, but you, you go ahead and do that. And next one is, to, put, to feed the rabbit, put the rabbit food in the rabbit dish. And you keep doing this, and you realize they're all the same note. And so you ask yourself, how could I do any better? What, what, should, the, what should the person have written on their notes? And so now, class, ask yourself what that is. You're right, exactly. So, the right thing to do is to say to feed the animal, where insert animal here, put the animal food in the animal dish. And so really thinking about this from computer science, animal is the input. The particular animal is, would go in in that slot and then you'd fill it. Remember it's like Mad Libs where you have the idea of these slots, a noun verb, and you take it. And it might say take the noun and copy it these three places. Here you have the animal, you're going to copy it into the thing you're supposed to feed, and what the food is, and what the dish looks like. So those are the, the same input might go multiple places. Um, there's a foreshadowing, which is how we'll see this in Beauty and Joy of Computing. And how we'll see this is you're going to be making functions. A function comes from mathematics, and you have a function that has some inputs, um, or none. We, we'll learn that functions can have no inputs also. But typically, functions have inputs. And those inputs, just like the picture here, it's kind of like a machine with a crank. And it has how many holes does it have? Well, here, this particular machine has only one hole. It happens to be the sine function. So it takes in the input, and you turn the crank, and output of sine of that number. So if I put in 90 degrees, output of sine of 90 degrees, or 1. So the idea is, when you're thinking about problems, and you're writing code to do this, you're writing code by dragging these blocks. And you think, you know what, wait. I, drug, I, I have a cluster of blocks over here that do something, and a cluster of blocks over here, and really they do the same thing, except for these small differences. So you want to combine that into a block, into, another, into a function, that takes the input, which one you're choosing. Maybe here is, this guy moves negative 100, this guy moves positive 100. Well, make how much you move the input. And both of these guys come in here and you say, the input is how much you move. When you pass in negative 100, it does this code. You pass in minus 100 and positive 100, it'll do this code. It'll still be the same code, but it'll do the same thing that this code would have done or that code would have done. That's the idea of that. So in general, abstraction, this is the second type of abstraction, which is generalization, looking at how you have lots of different instances and how you can generalize and have a more general solution to all of that. See you at the next video.